Good evening, gentlemen, and welcome. Good um, evening. And hello, out, hello out there, YouTube and internets and that sort of stuff. Um, you'll have seen from the title of this, we're, we're kind of calling it Standards Check Question Time. Um, it's a bit like Gardener's Question Time, but without the manure. Let's oh. make the same. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, so just, just in case anybody doesn't know who everybody is, um, let, let's do some introductions. Chris, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Chris Benstead. I, uh, I co-founded the Driving Instructor and Trainers Collective, uh, which is a, pla uh, a signposting platform for the driving instructor industry, because we've identified that no one knows where to go to find stuff, especially people coming into the industry. Uh, so we want to create that. We want to create a platform that means that questions like this and activities like this can be found by instructors that need them when they need them, rather than thinking you're out there on your own. Uh, I've been an instructor for 13 years. I've done the independent thing. I've done the driving school thing. And I now run my own, uh, co-run my own in case he's listening and he thinks he does some work. <laughs> and uh, with Ian, Ian Brett. And yeah, I, you know, I, I've been there, done it. And I'm now uh, doing theory training. I'm, I'm not on the road anymore. I'm training the theory test and, and helping people with you know, special educational needs, specific educational needs, and, and trying to solve that, because that is a nut that has not yet been cracked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's been a few people who have had a, a, an attempt over the years, but it's never really kind of taken off. So, I mean, would you, would you call the, I'm just thinking out loud here, what do you call the DITC, just, just kind of your one-stop shop? Rather than... Yeah, we, we, we want to be, it was interesting, I had a chat with um, the guys from the ADI and JC, and obviously it sounds like we're setting up an association when you look at it to start with yeah. because we've got membership uh there's a subscription membership and there's membership benefits and, and such but actually we're not we don't want to be an association we want to support associations we want to support okay. driving schools um we've we've just launched a, a badge for the lgbtq uh plus I community that, yeah. Yeah. to support instructors supporting them uh, uh, so we want to be a support structure. So, um, you know, the, the lovely Neil Peake paused and said, would you call yourself a middleman? And I said, yes, I've been a professional middleman pretty much all of my life. That's what I do. If you need someone, people tend to come to me and say, do you know someone? Mm. Um, so, yeah. There's all, so I think the middlemen of the industry um, we'll, we'll take women if, if they want to come on board and, and join us. Um, well, other genders are available, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, whoever you are, um, however you identify, uh, you know, we, we want to support people in that way. So I think, yeah, the in, industry middlemen is, is yeah. a title that I will, I know some, some will frown upon, but I will happily accept. I mean, as long as it's useful to those who are members of it, that's the key thing. It doesn't matter what it's called, really. I suppose, does it? It's, it's. But it was, it was interesting to to know. And I'm not bang on too much about this, but it was interesting. You know, I listened to Terry's Terry Cook's podcast mm. uh, about L, L, LGBTQ, and and it made me realise how woefully uninformed I am in that regard. And then I listened yep. to your follow on, then saw the stuff you were doing. So it's more power to you, really. And I, it's, I, it's, yeah, I, I, I think um, it is something that we think we know about because it's it's out there and around us. But actually, when we're engaging with someone in the car, we probably don't know about that individual's version of it enough. And it is, you know, to an instructor um, and not wanting to offend anyone by saying it, but it's similar to someone who is, say, dyslexic who comes into the car. Yeah. We We all know that everybody's dyslexia is different. In the same way, everybody's gender identity, everybody's, you know, um, the, the, the sexuality that they identify with, that's different as well. So, you know, listening to different people about different things is, is such a part of the job. But I it is in the modern we world. Do it as well as we should. Yes. So six pounds a month, if I'm not mistaken. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so six membership, six pounds a month. But the website's free. I've been stalking you. Uh, <laughs> Facebook group's I, free as well, isn't it? 
yeah for, uh, well the the we, we've got I, i'm a driving instructor i'm on facebook uh better known as the dark side um is is, is free um we've we've just broken the ten thousand members barrier uh, oh, yeah. so you know we we got there and yeah so that's that's kind of where it started for me i was a pdi who you know thought he knew everything and wanted to share um and you know want, want to find a community mm. and the ditc is a you know 10 plus year journey of that mm. um that finally I, i've got to a point where i feel confident enough in in myself um i can hear people laughing who know me because you know I, I i project that i'm confident but i think sometimes you've got to get there haven't you it's a journey and I, yeah, I, I feel confident enough in myself. Um, it, you know, Ian bit agrees that we're in a position now that we can we can help other people to to do it without punching above our weight. Excellent. Right. Well, thank you for taking the time to join us, and I, and I, and I wish you well with the DITC. Thank you. The invite. Thank you, Howard. Tell everyone who you are. Yeah. So my my background is also. Um, ADI for 12 years now. So, um, you know, trained with a, a national driving school. Um, yeah, got through that. So I quite soon into it, I was interested in instructor training. So started doing that as quite a new ADI. So that was a bit of a, a learning curve to go through. And I thought I always had wanted to have my own driving school. So sort of two years in got in driving school um how to drive and just started off small um sort of me to start with for about the first two years then managed to twist someone's arm to to come and join me and and it kind of has grown from there so now we've got um a few instructors where we're here in 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 norwich <laughs> Just thinking of what you said earlier. <laughs> I won't repeat it. Feel free if you want to say that again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah, up in Norwich, and yeah, so primarily now I spend my days um, doing instructor training. So people that obviously want to be instructors, yeah. taking them through part one, part two, part three, and 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 hopefully if, if they're successful and they live near here and they want to join us then they can they can join i think a lot of people will know you from youtube as well of course won't they when you develop sorry following there a lot of people will know you from youtube because yeah so I, I, I sort of yeah i think it was about 2015 i just my my the person that looks after my website said do you need a bit of a a, a, an online presence and um so i yeah i didn't know what i was doing i still don't really so um i just messed about doing some videos and you know trying to help Pr primarily the videos for part three mm. a few part twos there's a few on there for learners so it's like you know how to do a roundabout or how to do a bay park sort of um videos but yeah, that just sort of done in my own little way. I, I wouldn't say they're professional. It's just my take on it. And I think yeah. you're selling yourself short, Howard. I think I think your content is fabulous. It really is. Well, so if I look back at my old stuff, I think maybe I should just delete that because I, th I think that's actually quite interesting. Because as you as you say something and and you believe at that time that that's right, you know, in a year or two years time. It, it seems dated and you think I wouldn't say that anymore I'd actually I've changed my opinion on that I've learned something new I think things in a different way so um so then I think oh, I better do another video then so that's um as you develop yeah. yourself isn't it that's <laughs> good more power to you it's you know we, we never want to stand still do we really uh well I've got last last and least but not in not in girth <laughs> Bob Morton um Director of Training for Learner Driving Centres, one of the one of the UK's largest driving schools. Or I'm due to retire from that in three weeks, six days, and five hours, but I'm not counting. <laughs> and run my own company, Client Centred Learning, um, offering online assistance for uh, ADIs, PDIs, uh, those just coming into the industry. All three of us get lots of questions all the time, and the same questions keep coming up. And and you know we were chatting earlier, and there's a lot of nonsense on on social media. Um, and we want to try and 
give good solid advice to the questions we get asked all the time. And we're not going to go through millions because, you know, we want to keep the videos fairly short, but what we, we plan on doing is perhaps revisiting this from time to time uh, and inviting you guys to send us questions in. Uh, or we'll base it on the questions that we get asked all the time. Um, so we'll go through a few this evening. Um, and if you want to send questions in afterwards, it's just info at clientcenteredlearning.co.uk. I will put the links to the DITC, to Howard's website and to my website um, on the video. I'll edit that in afterwards uh, and they'll be in the links below or, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, we were chatting earlier on, you know, the, uh, about things. And for me, the standard check stroke part three, which is basically the same exam. The one is C, simple stuff done really well. And it's all about, in my mind, making sure that you deliver a lesson that's fit for purpose, that suits that learner on that day at that time. And it gets adapted where necessary, it says. I'm going to come back to that first because that's our first question as we come up. So it's not hard. You've just got to, got to get a grasp of the basics. And the standard was written by people who know about education and training. It was not written by the DDSA. I'm not saying they don't know about it, but... It was written by a company called People First, so the specialists in education and training. So it's about identifying goals, um, putting plans together to, to meet those goals, and then executing the plan, reflecting, reviewing, altering the plan, moving on. Dead simple. But I loved your analogy earlier on, Chris, with the ready, steady cook thing. I thought that was really quite clever. Do you want to share that with the world? The Coke. What's, what's Coke? Oh, um, no, look now. Cook. Sorry. There's no ready idea with it. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it, 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 for me, it just made sense. Um, you can, you, it's a window into my brain, and I apologise to everyone who has to visit. Um, I have to live with it, which is a very different thing. Um, so, ready, ready, steady, cook. When they apply for the show, they give a list of these are the ingredients that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bringing along. Um, but, you know, maybe on the day they couldn't get beef so they brought fish you are the professional chef so you've got to create something with these ingredients you've got to use all the ingredients that are there in some way or other and you've got to you know if, if they turn up with something a bit different you've got to adapt you've got to make it work mm -hmm. you've got to agree what you're going to create because it's got to appeal to the to the person who's there the, the contestant if you like and you've got to uh, you know, decide what's gonna, what it's going to be. There might be a, a starter, a, a main and a dessert, or you, know, you might go with a number of starters. And you agree that to start with. During the process, you know, there's a contestant that's using sharp, dangerous knives. So as the professional, you've got to make sure they don't chop anything off and that they, at the end, are unscathed and that no one else has got hurt either. So you've got to have good communication and you've got to know what each of you is doing. You can't have them stood there looking stupid on telly. Um, they, you, they've got to you know, know how to prep and, and you've got to have spoken them through it. But you've got to be busy, you know, looking nice and calm, but making sure that the end product's going to come together. And, and then at the end, you have the tasting. You have the, um, you know, the, was it good? Do you like it? What could you do differently? You know, maybe if you had turned up with the beef instead of the fish, we could have done this with it. Um, and, and that summary of things at the end of, of how did it how did it go? Was it any good? You know, does it taste awful? Um, yeah. And the majority of people are going to hear that and go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And, and, and I say, for, for me, that that's the standards check. Um, I agree with everything you've just said. I, I would add in it's a it's an assessment of anything hasn't got to be driving. You could be teaching someone to make a cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, that's what I love about it. Yeah. I mean, it's really good. I mean, I'm a big fan. And, and Howard, I know you're a fan of the new test. I mean, it's better than the old PST malarkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Torture, to be fair. <laughs> so should we move on to the question? Should we, should we do that? The, 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 this is one that I've heard loads this week, in fact, from people, unfortunately, um, Who'd, who'd not done as well. And it's, what happens if I don't need to adapt the lesson? What's what's supposed to happen there then? If I don't need to adapt the lesson, I suppose. So of course I, 
put my cute head on and say, interesting question, what made you ask it? Well, <laughs> I didn't have to adapt my lesson and he's marked me a one on this form. Right. Well, I understood the default was a three. It is. You start the test with three in that box. Well, if I've not had to adapt it, why has he marked me down? So, well, there isn't a lesson on anything anywhere in the world that lasts more than 10 minutes that doesn't need adapting because they either need more help, less help. They want to fly solo. <laughs> they want a demonstration. We've reflected, we've reviewed, and we've decided on this lap, we want something else. So it must be adapted. And of course, as we all know, it's the number one reason for failure. But it struck me as odd that there's an awful lot of people don't seem to understand that, that every lesson needs adapting. Every lesson on anything ever, because it's a different time, a different day. And the same people might react a different way. They might react a different way on the second lap. I don't know what you guys, what are you, what, yeah. what's your thoughts well, on that? Because quite often you see the examiner's comments, see it time and time again, where the PDI or the ADI has delivered a pre-planned <laughs> lesson. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's normally the first line. And you think they haven't adapted. They, it's, they, they've thought it through, planned it to meticulous detail, thinking, well, do this, we'll do that. Yeah. This will be the route. Almost like a, a bus route, like you know, we're going to stick to this route, and by here we're we'll be here at this time, and we're going to do this, then we'll pull up here, and we'll have this little chat. But like like you say, Bob, how would you how would you know that? How would you know you need to pull up and have a conversation there or so, go this way? I was so, um, I've got my children to run out in front of us on the way around. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it is exactly that, isn't it? People try and set these things up and, and they the practice it two or three times. And then by the time it comes to do it, the learner can do it perfectly well. So yeah, we just like a around the around. lesson, isn't it? Yeah, like school of mom and dad. And then we get the feedback that I'm hearing a lot of at the minute. That wasn't value for money. You were trundling around there like school of mom and dad, hoping things were going to get better. Your job is to make it get better. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I mean... You know, I think I think we're all in agreement on that one. It's it's an interesting one. It's it's and it, I do hear it a lot. Um, but it is for me. It's it's the thing of whose lesson is it? Yeah. So we we'll go with we we'll go with the TV programs again. Whose lesson is it anyway? Um, but the oh it, it's the 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 instructor has planned their lesson, haven't they? But they haven't planned the pupil's lesson. Yeah. Um, and and until you get that engagement. You, you don't know which way it's going to go. We've all done it. You, you, yeah, of you, course we have. <laughs> that, but that conversation that you've rehearsed, often with the boss, um, and you know, maybe that's where the issue is that we're all out of touch with having a boss nowadays yeah, um, in, in our role. Interesting. But it's that thing of you've, you've rehearsed it and you've been up for the fight and you've walked in the door and they've gone, yeah, it's fine, don't worry about it. Go, uh, <laughs> well, well, and another thing... <laughs> Or, 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 you know, can, can you loan me a hundred quid for this? And they go, what are you going to get out of it? And you're like, no, no, I just wanted a hundred quid. I just, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I quite yeah. often speak to PDIs and ADIs who are, you know, running through their plan and say, what, what, what are you planning on doing? Are we going to do that? Whose idea was that? Uh, what do you mean? And of course, if I get that, uh, what do you mean? I know it was theirs. So, well, you know, how are you going to showcase well? How's it going to look from the back? Nobody ever considers that or they don't seem to. How, how would that look to the examiner? What do you mean? Well, if you were sat in the back and you haven't got the view that you have and you're not sure of what's going on and you didn't see the 20 minutes before and you're not going to see the 20 minutes afterwards, can you make sense of what's going on here? Or does it just look a bit random? Why are you doing this with somebody who looks perfectly capable? So, yeah. The, um, the other one, favourite one, <laughs> I was marked a one for risk management. But I, 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 what's, I don't see what the problem is. I covered all of that at the start. You want to take that one? I want to do it. How's that possible? Surely it's a three. Well, I have three pages of it. Yeah, so that, that's that's quite common, isn't it? That yeah. that that's happening. Um, that if the roles and responsibilities agreed at the beginning, that they believe that that that's that box ticked, yeah. and we're good. That's got to be a three. And and I mentioned dual controls as well. So why is that not a three? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, having so I spoke to um, our examiner here, local, like the local examiner here recently, and he was 
sort of explaining that and sort of saying that you just really need to be, um, you know, e each new activity you're doing, let's say they've struggled on this roundabout, then you'll need to re-agree the roles and responsibilities. They might need a bit more help on the speed on approach, for example, but not the mirrors and the signal. So you're, you're redefining who's responsible for what and getting a new agreement. And if they're doing well, then you can agree that you'll do less or more as, as they need it. So is it, that, that I think that getting the level of instruction is probably the, the hardest thing because it's it, not a constant, is it? It's you're constantly Very dynamic thing. having to work with your pupil to, to adjust and balance to get it not to, you don't want to go over instruction, you want to go under, get it just right. Goldilocks moment. That's what we're looking for there, isn't it? It's just, just right in the middle. What's needed yeah. at this moment? And it, I think sometimes taking the time to just think to yourself, what do I need to do now? Not what do they need to do. What do I need to do now? Because you're the one who's on test. Chris, have you got any, any thoughts on that one? It's, I've got an issue. The, the risk assessment. Um, you know, Howard just said roles and responsibility. Why didn't they call it that? Yeah. I tend to say job share. Why didn't they call it that? Risk asset is, is not. Cross it out, write roles and responsibility. And then Who's doing what? Yeah. <laughs> you're going to get it right. Um, first thing I'll do with, with anyone who's doing a standard check, part three, doesn't matter, um, is cross out the box at the top that says which pupil are you taking. It's not your choice. Get rid of it. Um, whatever you think it is, they'll think it's something different. Mm. That's fine. Um, then the theme, get rid of it. Anyone who mentions the name of one of those boxes is probably getting it wrong because you want to find the lesson that suits the individual and they don't fit in a box, as we've discussed. So, you know, if you're going to go and do one of those things, try and come up with a different name for it, because then it's probably going to be more fluid in itself. Yeah. And and then that flows down to this risk assessment. I, I just why it annoys me and and roles and responsibilities, job share, it's the balance. And then as Howard said, it's, it's adapting that balance so that when they start sinking, you counterbalance them. And then when they start, you know, flying away with it, you bring in a bit more difficulty or, or independence to, to counterbalance that. And you are just, just keeping that going all the way through. And I have a sort of similar take, but from a slightly different angle, I, I tend to, you know, when you're scribbling out the, the, the name of that middle box, take the whole middle box out because if you get your lesson planning and your teaching and learning strategies right, the risk takes care of itself. Yeah. But everybody focuses on risk because that's the one, if you if you only score seven on that, you fail. So oh, I've got to really fix that. I've got to make sure that 96% of the time you'll be doing this and 14% of the time I'll be doing that. Hang on, let me do the maths here. And I've got dual controls. and <laughs> we, do, we don't do the same on the driving test where it's if you don't crash, you'll be okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's exactly that, isn't it? And and I, the other thing is we we were all sold a bit of a pup when it was the you've got to mention the dual controls. Yeah, that became the the risk thing. And I I, I don't know about you guys, but I have um, I I like the dual control thing. It, it really taught me a lesson that I didn't ask my pupils about it enough. Yeah, because I I said what everyone says, which is well, I told them on the first lesson. They know they're there. Why would I mention them? And actually, that new learner wants me to have dual controls. That test ready pupil doesn't want me to be touching the dual controls because they've messed up. Yeah. It's going to mean something different. And I took a lot from that. That really helped my teaching. Yeah, I think at, at the same time, you know, when it was first coming in, twenty thirteen, October twenty thirteen, we got the the guidance and it came in in April. It was April twenty fourteen. And I looked at it and I thought, oh, okay. So they're saying they want it mentioned a lot for beginners. And I thought, eh. so I tended to just use it all the time. Um, as ever, I've got your back. If, if I need to intervene, we'll have a chat about it and see what we're going to learn. That's it. That's, that's a cover all. Yeah. Everybody's done. And then, of course, if you demonstrate that you're able to do it at the right level at the right time, then it becomes easy. Uh, what's the other one? What's this one? Adapt the lesson. We've done that one. Um, I was marked one on whether practice area is suitable. And I was doing roundabouts, and that's the perfect place to do roundabouts. So why is that only a one? I don't. I, don't, I think he's taking the mickey. I think you just didn't like me, or maybe it's because I sat the test on a Thursday. This one comes up all the time. It's the perfect place to do it. And it, you know, I always say, well, okay, 
Do you actually think it's about the geographical location? Do you think it's, you know, put the pin in the map on Google Maps? Do you think that's what it's about? Or is it, what did you do with the area? What did you do with the route that you had planned? Did you make it count? You know, did you do one lap? Adapt the lesson. What do you want from this next lap? What do you want from this next lap? Well, what, what tends to happen, it's been my experience when I'm chatting to ADIs and PDIs, they just go round and round and round and things are getting a little bit better, but only just a little bit better. And then they're gobsmacked to find at the end that they've only got 30 points. And then they'll tell you, oh, I was close. You weren't. If it's any, anything less than 31, you weren't even remotely close. The basics aren't right because you're just trundling about. So they hit you with, you know, the, the, the lesson plan wasn't adapted. Your lesson plan wasn't good. They, they agree, you know, the, the goals and needs, that's a one. The, the agreed structure is a one because it's, although you've agreed stuff, it's not suitable because they're just trundling about. It's, it's, I sort of take on that. I don't know what you guys think on that one. Yeah, got a, well, someone, again, recently did their test. So someone got a one, someone got a three. So just share that if that's okay as an example. So the roundabouts was the, the person who got the one in the, the where the practice area is suitable had a, a pupil that was struggling with basic approach to roundabouts their MSPSL. They were they started off on the right area. Um, it was basic roundabouts. They were going on a circuit of lefts and it was all good. But then the instructor decided that it was time because the plan said that after about 15 minutes, I think that they'd move on and they took them on to um, busy um, multi-lane roundabouts off a dual carriageway. So now they're coming at these roundabouts at 60, 70 and, it, and their mirrors were bad okay. to start with. So now this is, now it's getting dangerous. And of course they failed this and got a one for the word of practice area suitable. Then the guy that got the three, three, um, he had a he had a very capable pupil that would would pass a test, and and he'd plans he, he the, the pupil had an issue with clearance and meeting situations, and he decided to take him a half, he had a half eight in the morning test and took him to the most extreme areas that you could go to primary schools, and. It, yeah, it was dynamic risk all over, and it, it really, really challenged the pupil, and it was the level that that pupil needed. Yeah. And then there was a road closed that was unexpected, and he had to adapt and change and go this way. And at, at the end of it, the, the examiner said, how do you think you got on? And the, the PDI said, oh, nightmare, you know, that road being closed. I had to go a different way. My pupil was making mistakes that they don't normally make so I had to go and do that and Riley 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 said so how do you think you did he said well I did terrible he said well because of what you just said is why you're one point off a of grade a today because you did adapt you did yeah. make that yeah. you made every example you used on that route you were picking up on the the, the bins needing collected and what could come around that corner then what did come around the corner the bin truck come around the corner and you were you were using that route and it was the right place for that that particular people on that particular day yeah. and um and it needed to be that challenge in it so it was um so yeah so he got the three in the where the practice area is suitable hmm. that was that there you go two little stories it, 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 it just makes sense doesn't it it's, it's that, sort of oh sorry chris go on i was going to say that works the other way around as well doesn't it is yeah. is with the with the first one so where you're going at roundabouts and it's going to, to pot, scrap the roundabouts. Yeah. If it's the clutch control that's the issue, go and whack them on a hill. Go and do that. Play with the clutch control. Forget the other bit. If it's the mirrors that have gone to pot, go and do some junctions, lefts and rights, and, and then you know come back to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Deconstruct further. It's one of the reasons I don't like roundabouts. Um, from a you know, it, it, it's great to start but you nearly always need to go, do you know what? There's something we could look at sideways from that. Let's go somewhere they're, quiet and have a look at that. They're, they're a good, they're a good um, you know, finger in the air to see how people are doing. Yeah. But deconstruct and then bring it back in. And, and again, and it's that, the adaption, isn't it? It's yeah. Yeah, what, what's needed. And that's an, it's a, a like cascade effect, isn't it, on that sheet? That you, you, if you lose that at the top, there's a few down below that you're going to be dropping as well. And then it starts hitting that risk box. Yeah. Um, yeah, it really is 
a key element? Well, I think it's, you know, I, I sort of, one way I use to explain it is that, you know, you're putting, you're setting some goals, putting a plan together, executing the plan. Then your job is, and this is old school now, see it, see it, source it, sort it. So you look at what the plan, what's happening during the plan. You're the professional. So you guide the conversation to help them understand what needs to happen. And then you put a new plan together. It's, it's, it's dead straightforward. It's, 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 in fact, it's so straightforward. It's actually frightening. Well, it kind of leads me into the one of the ones that I was going to save for next time, but I've had this a few times in the last couple of weeks. I was going to take a full license for that, but I've heard that I shouldn't do that. Is that right? Well, <laughs> God, how is <laughs> you're right. Well, funny enough, I you know had asked that that question recently when I had this chat to the examiner. His advice was if you want an easy test, like think about what the aimed at PDIs, so not so much ABIs, but think of PDIs. What do they do most of the time? They're, they're training people that are either beginning and working them up to their test. They're not working with many full license holders or people near test standard. Obviously, near the end, they are. So the examiner's advice, sort of, that that's what they're good at. That's what they should focus at. If you pick a full license holder, it's not really what you're used to and you're going to have a much harder job to pass. And I could just compare it to when I did fleet training. I think I did a, a six day residential where they were trying to knock the ADI out of me, I think, and yeah. make me think differently. And I, I just found that a really hard call. So I'm thinking, and then there was, you know, doing the job with fleet with, with, um, experienced full license holders and I just felt that it was, a, it was a totally different kettle of fish and I don't think if you're doing that all day every day and to, to do something different like that for your for your test is you know it's not what you're used to it's not your I think I think you're right it's a big you're not in your but, groove but you're not course. what you're normally doing so um so yeah. it is possible we've had you know, helped a lot of the police trainers that come through of course they take full license holders um but that they do that every day and and they know and there's plenty that they can get out of that student to get them to where they need to be um to pass their you know their, their police driving tests mm. and there's there's lots that they can give them and but it's a higher level and they're used I think to it. It's, it, it it is it is worthy of, of caution in that regard isn't it it's not what you're used to doing but that doesn't mean that you can't do it, of course. So I'm going to go play devil's advocate here. Yeah. If you are going to take a full license for it, let's say you can't get a learner to do it and you're going to take your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your daughter, your son, you know, other relationships are available. You're going to take a full license for it. Your level of instruction has to escalate massively. And you have to make sure that that person learns from that, that situation. If you do a really bang up job, the examiner might learn some stuff. So if you but you've really got to be well versed in, in the advanced techniques of, of forward planning and anticipation, because if you're not, you're going to fall short and the examiner's going to go, well, what was the point of that? And I'm working with somebody at the minute who is actually taking a full license all that. So you're going to have to show, well, here, mate, that person's going to have to come away from that saying, I've learned absolutely loads today. Otherwise, the examiner's going to go, that just wasn't suitable. So uh, it yeah, can be it done. Was, so it was just a starter to use Chris's ready, steady cook. It's just not enough. Just a starter. Yeah, I like that. Well, very, good. very good. <laughs> oh, I need to think of something witty to say. Damn, it won't happen. <laughs> so I think it's you know I don't think you should run away from taking a full license all but I think you should think very carefully. Um, I think there's another issue which the DVSA ignore because often they'll say, "Why did you bring a full license holder?" Because it's someone who's good at learners and hasn't got the experience on the other other end of things, especially with the PDIs. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, you're trying to cram in as much as possible into into that amount of time, but it is the you know generally generally learner drivers. So we get our standards check date and time when they're all at school. Yeah. So a lot of the schools aren't let them out. You, you, you can't guarantee that person's going to be there. So you get let down by the two people, three people that you've organised, and then you take your next door neighbour's husband because they're available. And, you know, so I think we've got to be able to, we've got to be able to hit that nail on the head. Um, the issue with 
you know, fully qualified drivers or experienced drivers is there's less nails to hit. Yeah. Whereas with a learner, you know, you, you, you chuck something at them because they're out of their depth, you have purpose. So you've got to cook the filet mignon rather than the as de mince. Yay, he thought of something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's very sad, isn't it? <laughs> really sad. But I think it's all about, you know, the stuff we've talked about all the way through, isn't it? Making sure that the lesson is fit for purpose, that it matches the learner. On the old PST, it was about, you know, as long as you could churn out a lot of information and spot faults, you were all right. It's not necessarily about you demonstrating your information and knowledge anymore. It's your competence in helping this person next to you develop. And there is there is a push towards wanting more client-centered lessons. I was just chatting earlier before we came to record it. The, the DVS here are now saying that at the start. I want a client-centered session. And you're getting hammered now if you don't do it. Now, if you grew up in the PST world, and you think that that old adage, you know, just don't do what you've always done, that the DVSA has said at the start, that's not going to cut it. It's just not. And if you've been a grade six for a thousand years and you do that stuff, the tell, 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 you will fail. So my, the best piece of advice I think I can give anybody is download the examiner's guidance from the DVSA website and, and read it. It's fascinating. <laughs> It'll tell you what you need to do and what you don't need to do. I just want to now. I was going to say that I, I think that the um, just just do a normal lesson and do what you always do is really good advice. If it's someone good. sat in your car, <laughs> if they've sat in your car and they've seen your lesson and then they're saying to you, just do what you always do or just do a normal lesson. Yeah. Don't take it from someone who hasn't sat in your lesson and seen what a normal lesson is. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah. the person on Facebook who's saying, I'm just, you know, I was fine. You're not, not them. That's right. So, you know, yes, it's brilliant advice if it's the right advice. If it's not the right advice, don't take it. And I, I th I'm leading on from that, I think, you know, get get you and your learner used to it. Have somebody sit in the back of your car for a few yeah. sessions. Get you used to it. Get your learner used to it. It might throw up some interesting things. It's like the first time you do a mock test with somebody and they try and kill you. And you think, but they're such a good driver. What the hell happened there? They go, do, 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 do. Yeah, I, I sat in on the back of a, a lesson with a PDI. And at the end of it, I couldn't believe this. I had to thought, where does this come from? That the instructor said, out of role. <laughs> I went, what? What did you say? <laughs> yeah, so it was comical because I said to the learner, I said, oh, well, you're acting like you can't drive. I <laughs> said, so why did you say that? It's <laughs> a strange thing to say, isn't it? Maybe laugh. But I mean, I'm conscious that we're, we're, we're pushing on and we don't want to do it for too long. They're the sort of they're the ones I get all the time, um, all the time. I mean, apart from the which pupil should I take and which lesson should I do? Well, I think we've kind of covered that. Just take the next one in your diary and do a good job. You should be you should be doing your standard check. And I know this is probably going to get me some flack, but it should just be a normal lesson. And if your normal lesson doesn't meet the standard, you need to get some training. <laughs> Any one of us will help you with that. <laughs> But this is the modern way of teaching. We are the last bastion of telling people what to do. The rest of the education and training world has moved on, and we need to catch up quick. BBS are doing their bit, I think. One of the few things I've got right this year. <gasps> did I just say that? <laughs> you, you did just say that, Bob, yes. <laughs> yes Definitely. Mea culpa. Listen, chaps, it's been an absolute blast, as always, in your, in your company. Um, let us know in the comments if it's something you'd like to see us do again. Um, ask questions in the comments or send us, I'll put the email address on it at, at, across the video at the end to send questions in. Um, and it's, you know, we, we figure we're giving you our time for free. So we're all, I'm going to put a shameless plug for all of our offerings on the video, which I think is fair enough. It's a fair trade off. Um, thanks for watching and giving us your time. And we look forward perhaps to seeing you the next time. So it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks. And it's goodbye from them. Goodbye.